worrying about money and then worrying about bills and then worrying about my husband and worrying about the cat and worrying about the house and oh my god do i smell gas is my house gonna blow up you know you just start going and going welcome to no two gays about it the podcast for the over 50 gay male this season it's all about relationships and today we're going to talk about our relationship with ourselves but more importantly our relationship with our mental health Hello, I am the usually depressed, sometimes worried and anxious Tom Burke. And I am Michael Foley, the Eeyore of this couple. Wow. (laughs) Well, hello, Eeyore. Hello. That makes me a fat bear with no pants on. Well, that's fantastic. If the shoe fits. It does. (sighs) Unfortunately... I have done a lot of reading. Well, not unfortunately, I've done a lot of reading, but I've done a lot of reading. And unfortunately, the stats that are out there are saying that the gay male over 50 is having a lot of issues uh, with their mental health. Um, And before we begin talking about this, we do have to throw this out there. We are so not doctors. We are so not therapists. We're not even newsmen reporting news. We are just two old gay guys talking about ourselves and all the issues that are affecting us and all the guys around us. Right. And just so you know, we are two older gay guys who happen to experience these issues ourselves. And right. what we're going to try to do with this particular episode is to maybe just to peel back a layer of the stigma or the shame that may be attached with someone out there not wanting to share because they do feel like this is just something that's I'm going through and I'm, you know, I should feel ashamed because you shouldn't. Definitely not feel ashamed. And I don't think there is one person, whether gay, straight, white, black, whatever, that doesn't at least every once in a while have some mental health issue. You know, and it it's such a big, heavy word, mental health issue, but it's just feeling like overwhelmed or feeling, you know, like I said earlier, anxious. Every once in a while, I get that anxious feeling yeah. or it's not a big major thing. It's just every once in a while, it's like, you know what? Mm, I, and the I'm, ironic thing is that we live in a society where physical health is spoken about all the time. Right. And... Mental health has been, you know, pushed into a closet and it's that dirty little secret that you can't share. And we want to hopefully through this, maybe encourage people to share a little bit more because especially in our community, over 50% of LGBTQ folks have experienced depression or anxiety to a point where it feels unmanageable. So... We just right. want to. We it, just want to encourage you. It is manageable, but you have to let it out. Well, that's it, and that's what we're doing now. We're just talking about it, bringing it to the surface, which is important because, again, in all of the stuff that I read, you know, you're right. Over fifty percent of us are having these feelings every once in a while, but some people it gets so overwhelming that they are turning to drugs and alcohol or sex and or food and whatever they can to just kind of mask those feelings or push them aside and feel something else, which is so unfortunate, especially for those guys in our community. And one of the questions I have is, why is mental health an important thing for a gay male over 50? It is, it's important because it helps you lead a happier life. So it's important to do things that nurture that aspect of self Um, and whether it is, we've talked about this on previous episodes, whether it's to do some sort of physical exercise that, um, you know, creates endorphins that helps you lift your mood. Um, The worst thing you could do is sit around and not do anything and become complacent or just go out and like you were saying, we use all those substances substances to numb. And I want to encourage people that, don't numb because once that anesthesia wears off, whatever it is you're using, um, that stuff's still there. And you're still at some point either have, you know, you're going to have to be anesthetized 100% of the time 
or you're going to eventually have to deal with it. And, uh, right. you know, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's really important that we do take care of our mental health as, as you said, as important as taking care of our bodies as we're aging, but we want to keep our minds sharp and we want to, we've talked about this a number of times. We want to set the example for the younger community that is, you know, following in our footsteps. And if they see us not dealing with our problems and, you know, covering things up, well, then why do they have to? You know, I think it, it's important for not only us, but for the uh, legacies that we're leaving and, um, but also it, it is, life's hard, you know, especially these days, man. I mean, you know, yeah. there are, we're, we are just bombarded on a daily basis with just really heavy shit. Um, you know, you turn on the news today and sure. there's another war and you're right. seeing these images that just are crushing. Um, or let's be real, you know. Financially, most people in this country are literally a paycheck or two away from being homeless and the stress that that adds. Um, and especially, you know, in our community, gay men over 50. Without a doubt. First of all, we're aging. That's a whole nother can of worms there. But the financial thing, too. Do Can I ever retire? Will I have enough money to support myself? We... So many of us don't have families or children who are going to take care of us, so we have to also plan about that. That sends the head just spinning. You yeah, know. and we were talking about this the other day, where five years ago, I was paying to live as a single man in West Hollywood, California. I was paying half of what I'm paying now to just exist. Yeah. The stress that that brings into your life Sure. on a daily basis is overwhelming. And sometimes you're just like, I just can't. The, the right. anxiety of like, what am I going to do by the end of the month? How, you know, I, it's, it's suffocating. And I, I just, again, I want to encourage people, share that. Because if, right. it, 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 it will suffocate you if you don't let it out. And you are a relatively healthy man. Um, there are others who are not and have to actually have that on top of everything. Not only is it really expensive just to live every day, but then you have medication on that and maybe hospital stays or doctor's visits. I mean, I get why people are struggling mentally or having issues. Um, but you can't get wrapped up in that tunnel and start spiraling. Uh, once you spiral, and if kinda... you do, because you know what, you're going to. It 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 is human nature to, especially when it comes to stuff that's heavy like that, to overthink, yeah. and that's when you have to get outside of yourself. Right. You have to um, call up a friend, go to a movie. Just do something to get you out of that quagmire. Right. So, all right, let's uh, really rip the Band-Aids off, rip everything off, and just expose ourselves. As we're saying, it's really important to talk about it. So you and I are going to talk about ourselves, um, which is a very difficult thing, especially for waspy old me who was trained, never <laughs> open your mouth and talk about anything. Yeah. And if we don't like something, look the other way. Uh, so would you be willing to talk about your mental health and I'm, struggles you might I'm have? so willing because there, there was such a, a long period of my life where I felt so much shame in regard to my mental health and my mental well-being, that I didn't share it. And it took a really long time and a lot of work to be able to express it. And once I was able to do that, it makes it easier when you're in the middle of it, that you can, it's weird. It's like there's almost this center you create that regardless of all the darkness coming in, that there's a safety within you that knows I need to get this out of me. If that makes any sense. 
I'm not quite following you. So can you kind of elaborate on that? So prior to be a, to being able to do this and to work on that skill of sharing the crazy in my head, it was all dark. I felt so alone. And now I have friends who support and encourage me. And they are that center. They are that light. Right. And when I remember to reach out and access that, it makes all the difference in the world. Right. I think, you know, all of us gay men, especially those of us over 50, we all experience that darkness when we were not able to be who we authentically were. And we had to sit in that darkness alone. We were the, were we the only people feeling these feelings? You know, we didn't have the internet. We were just yeah. there by ourselves. So I think that's, that is part of who we are. And that does feed into kind of our mental health to today, because we did all go through that stuff. Um, and then eventually as we came out and we've talked about this a lot and you find your people and your tribe and you do need those people to help you through, um, to b bring you out of that darkness. But so can you like pinpoint now, like what are some of the struggles that you're struggling with? Obviously, you know, again, you dated. know, the, the, for me, I love my life. I I've worked really hard to get to this place where I am. Um, both emotionally and mentally, but the weight of the financial, yeah. which I've never experienced, you know, until the past few years, like since COVID, I think it's magnified it, um, that it's, it's a different arena. And so I'm having to learn how to navigate that, um, which is way more challenging because it feels like it's um, an exterior issue that's pushing on it as opposed to something that is just solely me like you know when i was younger i dealt with thoughts of suicide on a daily basis which i know a lot of us in our generation have because like you said we felt alone um right. so this is a weird dynamic that i'm trying to navigate now it's totally new which just goes to show you no matter how old you are right. there's always something new that's going to come along and sort of you know clip you on the side and take you off of your feet. Um, so uh, I'm struggling to figure out how to stand up again in this moment. Yeah. Well, I think you're right. I mean, at, just because we're aging doesn't mean hard things stop. Right. You know, they just kind of seem to multiply, actually. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just every new phase that we go into in life, we're hit with a whole bunch of new things that we have to deal with. And for a lot of people, it's tough. They, they do feel alone, like you're feeling alone on this. And they do feel like they, they can't. They can't take on another you know, stress. They can't take on another brick on their shoulders. Yeah. But Which is then why they are turning to these other things to mask. You know, and it's definitely happening. a lot. I probably I'm not 100 percent sure, but like I because we, we also talked about this this week, where you have a second person in your home environment that if you need to lean on for a moment, you know, if you're having some financial struggles, you have there are two of you there. When you're single, you're kind of on your own, and it I, right. there's a there's a different layer to that, which. Uh, I think might be more challenging for us single folks out there when it comes to financial stability and figuring out that journey through the rest of our lives. Right. Um, do you find, do you find that? Do you like, if you're, do you guys lean on each other when you're experiencing financial issues or, or cause I know there are couples out there who for a lot of couples, those things break a relationship. Right. And it's when you're going through struggles like that, at least in my mind, where you have someone to lean on and you can navigate it together, it seems to make the waters just a little easier to deal with. Well, I think, you know, it's all relative to your world because, yeah, there's somebody else here, but I also have another person who is, you know, so we have two people that have to eat, two people that have to live, two people that have to, you know, so 
there's that pressure, you know. Um, I mean, I guess it's definitely great to have someone there when you're having a problem to be like, oh my God, I'm having a problem. Um, but, you know, it it also goes back to it's all, life is all about choices. And I chose in my 20s to be committed to one man and build a life together. Of course, along the way, I was like, oh, look at you guys who are all single and don't have to worry and don't have to like, you know, call to check in if I'm out or, you know, so it's all about choices. So yes, I do have this person there that I can, if I'm having issues, talk to. Not that he's always going to be receptive or even care. No, he does care. I'm just kidding. But um, so I don't know if it makes it any easier. It definitely, you know, like I'm thinking, how can we afford two of us to live for the next 30 years or whatever? You know, that's, I know that this happens to a lot of us at this age, um, the constant calculating in your head that like, okay, I'm this age, um, my dad died at this age, I've got the, you know, like, how long am I going to live? Do I have enough money? Okay, so if I sell my house and then I go through all my savings, I can live till I'm, you know, next whatever. year. You know, like <laughs> it's that, con- yeah, until tomorrow. Um, what time is no, it? it's that constant calculator that's uh, clicking away in your head, like, okay, so, and my husband is like, well, uh, he wants to retire. And I don't want him to retire mainly because he needs to be out there doing something. But, you know, it's also, well, then. I- I'm not old enough for Medicare, so I'd have to pay for my own insurance now because we're getting great insurance through his company. My work isn't giving me great insurance. So, you know, it's that, all that stuff that's constantly in our heads. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question or not, but I just rambled you about did on, that. You did on a level, but I, was, I, I think I was leaning more toward the emotional support that when you're having yeah. that sort of exterior Issues. pressure coming at you. Right. As opposed to a singular personal struggle. Is it a little bit easier when you have somebody who's there to, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, at times it is. But like I said, at other times, it's, you know, I don't have to just worry about myself. I also have to worry about him. And vice versa. I I mean, I'm assuming that that's a two-way street that he worries about you. Well, I, you know, I know your husband. I know he worries about you a lot. So that's right. Which, yes. And of course he should. But, um, you know, he has some health health issues. We just went through a health thing with him. And it was like, you know, if I didn't have him in my life, okay, that would have been one humongous stressor that wouldn't have been there. So, you know, it's all relative to whatever world you're in. Right. Um, you know, uh, and how we deal with issues. Um, I, after my, my parents both have passed and my mom passed a long time ago and then my father died. And then, you know, that was like the, the end of our family unit basically. And, um, it was, it was weird for me. Uh, I don't know, maybe a year after that, all of a sudden I, I didn't know what was happening to me. I was, really sad, really upset. And I, I knew, yeah, I guess I'm going through a mourning thing or I'm not sure what was happening. And it just seemed to get worse and worse. And, you know, everything just got heavier and heavier and work was just made everything worse. And Scott, my husband was making everything worse. And I could be watching television or driving and all of a sudden just Dreams of tears coming down my face. And I was like, I don't know what's happening here. And finally, I was like, I need to do something. I mean, I'm sure I spent, <laughs> I'm sure I ate through a lot of cupcakes <laughs> and a lot of Hostess products because Pillsbury that, Slice and Bake Cookie Dough. Oh my God. Oh, just crack it open seriously. and start eating, you know? Um, but I made the decision I need to get some help. I don't know what's happening. I can't do this on my own. My husband is trying, but he's he too is like, I don't know what to do, right? So I found a therapist and I started going to therapy. I went to cognitive therapy. So it wasn't like a long-term, we're going to do this forever. It's like, let's figure out what's happening. Let's give you some tools to deal with this, which was great. Um, 
And I found the right therapist for me. That makes you know, all the difference. Huge, yeah. right? Um, luckily, this guy was a mean son of a bitch, <laughs> you know. Which is he needed. It, I mean, you got to me. have somebody. Yeah, yeah absolutely. For me. Yeah. I didn't need someone to go like, oh, Tom, I know everything's so bad. Poor you. You know, I needed someone to go like, hey, man up. Let's figure out what's happening and face it head on. And I think that was one of the greatest tools that he gave me was just acknowledge what's happening. You know, otherwise you f go into that yes. spiral. You know, if you're like, because as I mentioned in the beginning, I worry all the time. I worry about everything, every little thing, every big thing. It's just who I am, right? Some people, as we have mentioned, we have a friend who is wired happy, who seems everything is so joyful. Merry and sunshine. Oh my God. And I look at him like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I happen to be wired a little bit sad. And I know that, right? which helps me deal with problems. And then when I start why, uh, worrying, all I do I have to do is go like, oh, well, there I go again, you know, instead of worrying about money and then worrying about bills and then worrying about my husband and worrying about the cat and worrying about the house. And oh my God, do I smell gas? Is my house going to blow up? You know, you just start going and going. Um, so for me, one of the greatest things I did was to find help and to find the right guy for me. I wanted a gay therapist. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to explain, you know, right. um, and finding my people. I didn't have to explain about being gay. I didn't have to explain about having a husband. I didn't have to explain any of that stuff. So that was an important thing for me. Um, and, and you were lucky that someone provided you with the tools and that therein lies right. the key. If you don't have the tools, you can't build the house. Right. Right. So that is that's important for everyone out there and you know everybody needs different tools whatever works for you but you have that's to seek thing. it out right you know you can't and you have to try different things as well you know yeah maybe you're trying drugs and alcohol and that gets to a point where you it just isn't helping anymore so then you turn to something else uh, a stronger drug or you start you know finding comfort in just going out and having sex every night with whoever and then that doesn't seem to work and then what's going to be next so you have to start finding tools that do help you right. and maybe exercise isn't the thing that's working maybe talking to your friends isn't working maybe you know going to a, a support group maybe that's the thing i mean you just have to put yourself out there and, and you just have to keep, keep trying because yeah there's there yeah. is no there is no magic Bullets. God, no. that's like gonna all of a sudden oh that was the one that hit the target um, right it you know it may be three or four different things that you have to learn how to utilize in the right moment that um will get you out of that funk it's it's and you know you were talking about it. it's really hard once you're stuck in the whirlpool to actually yeah. pull yourself it's like you know i'm from the jersey shore there was there were riptides <laughs> and the one thing you learned if you're in the ocean and you're caught in a riptide you don't fight it. You just let right. it carry you where it's going to carry you. You keep your head above water and maybe 20, 30 yards down the shore, the current changes yeah. and you could swim to shore. That's sort of the perfect metaphor for, you know, depression and challenges is sometimes you just have to let it take you where it's going to take you. And then when you have that moment of clarity, it's like, now I can swim to shore. Right. So I've got a question for you. Um, so we are both out in the world. We're living our gay lives, especially out here in Palm Springs. And occasionally I know that I see somebody who you would think from the outside, good looking guy, great house, great husband, great career, whatever, who always is really over drinking yeah. or who is always seems to be high on something or you know when you see people who you think are having some sort of issue what should we be doing so recently i shared that i worked um, i managed a bar in west hollywood for a very long period of time and i saw that on a regular basis Right. And for a very long time, 
I didn't do anything. But after one of the regular customers committed suicide, I felt like I was there for a reason. And that was to actually, instead of just placating and pretending and going along with the pain that I saw this person was in but didn't know how to process it, I would address it in a really loving and caring way that made them know, even though I don't know you on your daily basis, if you're going through something, I'm willing to listen. And I know that made a difference because I mentioned this in a previous show too, where I would have people who would just disappear, who you would see yeah. on a daily basis for just years, and then all of a sudden they're gone. And you always worry, or I did anyway. Right. Um, and then I would run into them somewhere in an event or just out and about, and they would say to me, I have to thank you because you saved my life. And I think that's probably, you know, those are the best compliments I'll ever get in my life. Yeah, of course. Is that just because I was willing to listen to somebody, it made a difference. So now that you're not working in a bar, though, and if you see somebody struggling out in, in the world, do you feel it's your place to go up to them and say, hey, you, you if it's, need a... If it's someone I have a relationship with, or I at yeah. least know, absolutely. Because well, I, am, if... I am that person who will always... I mean, I think you know this about me. I'll always... I, I, you just know when something's going on with somebody. And I don't pretend it's not. Um, I will, I'll, talk yeah. to, I'll try to talk to them about it. And if they don't want to, that's fine. I get it. Um, but I just, you know, I, I try to let them know that there is somebody here who's willing to listen. And you're not alone, which I think makes such a huge difference. It has to me. Okay. But Michael, yes, you are the guy who's, who's saying like, hey, you got a problem. Let's talk about it. You, on the other hand... I can see and go like, uh-oh, something's wrong today. What's happening? And you're like, no, nope, not going to talk about it. So Absolutely. You know, you teach best what you need to learn most. Right. No, no, no. So <laughs> I'm saying. But, so I'm saying. You know, d don't you eventually get it out of me? You know, I, there's that, there's that knee-jerk instinct that is that thing that right. I think we all have, where it's like, I don't want to dump my shit on somebody else. But then, you know, like you or Joe or, you know, you, you, you sort of prod and yet you, you're like, I'm going to get this out of you. Well, that's the thing. Cause I'm a total dick. So it's like, oh, no, no, yeah. I'm going to make you talk to me. But, um, but I, but in talking now about our, our community in general though, you know, there are those people who are going to shut down right, right away. If you're like, Hmm, do we have the responsibility to help these people or, I feel like we do. I think we have the responsibility to help not only people who are in our community and, you know, the over 50 group, but to, if you see somebody who's suffering or you know is going through something, it doesn't hurt just to let them know. There doesn't even have to be conversations. Like some days when you say to me, what's going on? I don't want to talk about it. I'm not ready to talk about it. But to let somebody know, hey, I'm here. And right. if you need it, I'm here for you. And that's right. it. And that can make all of the difference in someone's day. You don't necessarily need to sit and have a, you know, a therapy session in the moment, but you just, to, just to let someone, cause I know for me, when somebody says to me, I'm here and I care when you're ready, it changes everything inside me. Eeyore becomes a little bit of Tigger, <laughs> you know, it just okay. makes a massive difference. I think also, um, for the people who are struggling out there, it's really, if you have a phone, you can help yourself, you know, um, especially today, you just Google uh, online therapy, and you can get a phone number to call, you know, it's so easy to, you don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to be face to face with anyone, you could just do it over the phone, if, you know, just to make that initial step that um, I need help, but I, I'm afraid I, I don't want to be judged, whatever it is, you know? Um, and then in our community, it's the same thing. 
every community has some sort of gay and lesbian LGBTQ plus community center somewhere. Um, and I'm just, just, uh, just a really quick thing, because since you brought that up, I posted yeah. something on our Facebook page today that if people go to No Two Gays About It, the, the number two, um, mm -hmm. places that you can get help because it is national. Uh, um, World Mental Health Day. Yeah. So, yeah, you could go to our Facebook page and, and there's, yeah. we put some stuff there for you to Fantastic. To find. Awesome. I found a, an amazing uh, resource, which I'm keeping for myself, but I want to share with everybody. It is um, the SAGE, S-A-G-E, Advocacy and Services for LBTQ Plus Elders. It is a national resource. Yeah. So all you have to do is go to their site, which is LGBTA, LGBTAgingCenter.com. You put in your state, you put in your city, they will hook you up with whatever you need, whether it be, you know, any AA or alcohol, drugs, sex, addictions, depression. You need want to talk to a therapist. You want to have a, a group meeting. I think those really do help a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and that is actually of like, one of the organizations that's on our Facebook page. So if, oh, fantastic. If, if, oh, you're not, you. if you're not in the mood today to, to cope, you know. Yeah. And two months from now, you're like, you know what, maybe, exactly. maybe I can. It's on our Facebook page, folks. Go there, yeah. and they are one of the facilities to help you out to take that first step if you, if you need it. Right. And also, you know, like I had mentioned this earlier, we're not just talking about these major, huge stresses in life, whatever. It could just be loneliness. I mean, as we're all aging, we're, we're finding loneliness. And to just go to... Uh, depending on your age, like a senior center, they have these little things happening, you know, lunch for the seniors or whatever, just to get out and talk to other people. That definitely helps. I know you and I have talked about this. We have moved to a new city from a place that we both lived in for decades. And so the loneliness here, trying to find our new people, you know, even, yes, I have a husband who is you know, on the end of the couch watching television with me. But there still is that I feel lonely. I feel alone. I, I'm trying to find people. And, uh, you know, so it's not like, oh, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with death. I'm dealing with, you know, money issues. But just being lonely could be sometimes be just yeah. as painful and just as heavy to carry that around with us so whatever it is that you're dealing with you know like with when i see michael and i'm like oh something's wrong today it's like i don't want him to be unhappy yeah he's a total asshole but i don't want him to be unhappy i want you know his life to be better and same you know with me we just want everyone out there to be living their authentic and happiest lives as possible so Take control of your mental health in, in whatever way you can. Take a, one little step. Make a call, you know. Don't talk about yourself. Talk about someone else. Everyone loves to talk about themselves, but at least you're engaging with someone else, you know. Yeah, you have to. You really, you really do have to try. And again, I, it's hard. It's hard. It really is, especially when you're our age and you've lived yeah. through the generation that we, we did, that... Uh, keeping stuff on the inside seems it's just force of habit but the the more we you trained ourselves to do yeah, that the more you step out of that the easier it becomes right and again if you also see somebody out there who looks like they're just stuck in the shit just say hey if you need, ever need to talk i'm here doesn't have to be anything else but that that so I think you, when you're depressed, you sort of walk around with your head down and you, and you can't see anything else, right? And somebody just saying that to you makes you lift your head up and go, oh. Yeah. And that seriously can make all the difference because, again, I know it has for me. When somebody does that to me, right. it makes all the difference. It makes me lift my head up and just get a little bit outside of myself. And then that's when you're able to take another step out of that shit and hopefully a little bit more into the light. Yeah. 
So let's all step into the light. And we want to hear from you. We want to help all of the people within our community, and especially the guys like us, the over 50 crowd, because we know it's not an easy path. We know that every day we get hit by another change, another kind of brick onto our backs that we have to carry. So, Michael, how can people reach out to us? Um, you guys could get us at the moniker No Two Gays About It, and it's the number two. So, No, the number two, Gays About It, on Facebook, on Threads, on Instagram, on TikTok, and you could hit us up at Gmail, too, at uh, no two gays about it at gmail.com. And find us on YouTube as well. Um, no two gays about it. If you do watch us on YouTube, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. And so then every time you, we have a new episode, you get to watch us again. Now, wouldn't that bring some light into everybody's life? Um, um, okay, yeah, I know. I'm um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it actually might bring some humor into everybody. That's life, it. Because you gonna, get to like look I at said, us and go, oh, you know what? I don't have it so bad. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, great. Um, yes, let's all just be there for each other. How about that? Yes, reach um, out. Reach out. Cool. So on... Um, Today, World Health Day. Michael, what are you going to do for yourself? What are, you going to, what are you going to do when we're done here to step into the light, to raise your head, to feel better about the amazing Michael Foley? Well, I'm going to the movies. Oh, see, there you go. How uh, great is that? Well, yeah, I, I love, I live for horror. And, um, oh, <laughs> you know, this may not be somebody else's idea of right. something to do on this particular day, but it's mine because I love horror. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see Saw. Okay, cool. So that's you, what I'm doing. Well, good. What and are I you know doing? You well, first of all, I know that you absolutely love movies. Movies are your thing. And so going to a movie obviously will raise your spirits, which is a good thing. It's really the popcorn. Do. The movie's okay. kind of irrelevant. Even if it's okay. a bad movie and the popcorn's good, I'm happy. There you go. Um, but what are you awesome. doing? You're going to hit the pool? I am. I'm going to go swim my laps. I can't tell you. I, I love swimming. I feel so great when I'm swimming. It makes me happy. So I'm going to do that. And then since my diabetic husband is away, I'm then going to go to a bakery, probably buy a cake and come home and eat it because that also makes me very happy. Sweet. Right? Literally. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. Nice. So, everybody, get out there, step into the light, do something that brings some happiness to you. And if you're struggling on this mental health day, although whenever you listen to this, if you're struggling, reach out to somebody. All right? So, until then, Michael, this has been awesome. Go have an amazing day and be the amazing Michael Foley that you are. And thank you to the amazing Tom Burke. And thank you, everybody out there who is are equally amazing. Um, we truly value your taking the time to be with us. And we will see you next week. Yes, we will. Hey, thanks for listening. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>